Hi there, today we're going to talk about counting on, which is a mental math addition strategy. And specifically, this is a beginning strategy that your students will use when they're younger. So let's take a look at how this strategy looks. So if we roll two dice, we roll a five and a two, and we want to find the sum. Counting on means that we're going to start with a bigger number. So in this case, it's a five, and then we're going to count on six, seven. And that's how we're going to find the sum. Now this is different than what your students might do when they're first starting to add. And that is when they might count all of the objects in a set. So what that might look like if you were to roll a five and a two, your students might say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be a very beginning strategy. Counting on is where we try to move them away from counting all of the objects and just start with the bigger number and then count up from there. So when is a good time to use counting on and when isn't? Let's just discuss that very quickly. So ideally, we only want to use counting on if we're adding one, two, three, or four to a number. Beyond this, it gets too confusing and it gets really easy to make mistakes. So let's look at an example here. If we are adding six plus four, this would be a situation where counting on can be an effective beginning strategy. We would begin with six and then count on seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, if we are adding 16 plus 14, this is not a good scenario to use counting on because if we begin with 16, and then we try counting up 14, so we're gonna think 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You can see the problem here. It gets way too confusing to remember where you're at and mistakes become inevitable. So we want to only encourage counting on when we're adding one, two, three, or four to a number. Um, now your students will move away from counting on eventually, once you start modeling more effective strategies, but this is still a good beginning one to teach. Now, something else that we want to make sure we are reinforcing is the commutative property of addition, meaning that it doesn't matter which order the numbers are in, uh, we, can still, we can still add them either way. So what I mean by that is for six plus four, if we saw four plus six, we still want our students to realize that we would begin with the bigger number here, six, and count up, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, now when we teach any new concept in math, it's really important that we follow the concrete representational abstract model, or you might hear this referred to as the CRA model. So let's take a look at how we can teach counting on using the CRA model. So in the concrete phase, we are going to do a lot of hands-on activities. And this is where kids are actually moving objects around and they have the opportunity to manipulate them. When we move on to representational, this is when we're drawing pictures. So uh, we're drawing pictures or representations of the materials that we used in the concrete phase. And then abstract is where we're actually writing out an equation or the actual numbers and the addition symbol. Now it's ideal to use concrete, representational, and abstract all together rather than um, one after the other. So you might consider this to be a Venn diagram model. And if you can incorporate some concrete, some representational, and some abstract into your lessons, this is where your students will be able to build maximum understanding. What happens a lot in math is that we focus on this abstract phase because we think that this is where we want students to get to, right? We want them to be able to solve equations. Um, so we kind of rush through the manipulative phase or the drawing representations phase, but we really need to focus a lot on incorporating all three phases because this is how math understanding and conceptual understanding is built. So let's look at some examples of concrete, uh, or sorry, ways to practice this strategy with concrete materials. So I love, love, love rec and recs or number racks, as you might hear them called for any math strategy, but counting on it lends itself to very well. So here we see that we have nine beads on the top 
and three on the bottom. So this is just a way for students to actually see the numbers that they're adding. So if we were adding nine plus three, we could represent it on the rec and rec like this. They could start by saying nine in their head and then they could actually touch these three beads as they count on 10, 11, 12. Dominoes are another item that you might have in your classroom that lend themselves really well to counting on. So for example, for six plus four, your students will get to the point where they'll recognize this side as a six. So we can just start with six in our head and then count on and touch the dots as we do that. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten frames are another awesome tool and even better if you have this style of ten frame that I've showed in the picture where you can actually move the dots. So this one shows five plus, oops, plus three. And so we can actually start in our head with five and then we can, we can touch those other dots as we count, six, seven, eight. You can even just use unifix cubes or Lego blocks or really any kind of blocks that you have. Here I've divided the blocks into two sets. So we've got six plus three. And again, this gives your students the chance to actually touch the blocks as they're adding. So we're going to encourage them to start with six and then count on seven, eight, nine. And they can actually touch them and move them around. And this is helping them build that really, really important understanding. Another great tool is a beaded number line or a bead string. I made this one really inexpensively with some materials that I got off of Amazon. And this is just another way for them to actually see the numbers. So this bead string is designed uh, with the beads in groups of 10. Here I've shown 10 plus three. So we're going to start with 10 and then they can actually touch these beads as they move them over. So 11, 12, 13. So these are all really wonderful ways to practice counting on in a concrete way in your classroom. Now let's take a look at the representational phase. So this is when we start drawing representations of the math. So we can represent uh, a rec and rec or, or um, dominoes or 10 frames or any of that in pictures. So we might use 10 frames that we've drawn out and have our students work with these 10 frames. And we could um, make equations, oops, we could use different colors to represent. So for example, this would represent five plus three and it makes it very visual to see the five and the three. Uh, we could also use dice patterns that are actually drawn rather than the actual dice, okay? So any of these can be represented in a rep um, in a drawing. A great way to represent the beaded number line is with an actual number line. So number lines are super important to introduce. If we were going to add uh, five plus three on a number line, we could show them how we can start with the bigger number and then make three jumps, six, seven, eight. Okay, so those are some representational ways. Now when we get to the abstract phase, this is where we're just writing it out with numbers and symbols. So the big idea here is to try to incorporate all of these phases into your lessons as much as possible and continue to make manipulatives, like I've shown here, continue to make those available to your students even after you feel like you're through the manipulative phase because they will still be really, really beneficial and your kids need a lot of experiences with concrete materials like this. So I hope this video has helped to uh, get you uh, get some ideas flowing for the counting on mental math strategy and if you have uh, if you're interested in learning about other mental math strategies then please check out my youtube channel where i have lots of other strategy videos available thank you so much have a great day